Let's talk about the IEA debate. Your party, the PPP, you were not invited and you have come out to say that uh, you're disappointed. What, in your opinion, would your flag bearer, Dr. Endum, have added to the debate? Well, you see, I think that when you talk about democracy, transparency, equity, then when you have a platform like this and your funding is based on the fact that you are helping to deepen democracy and all the nice things that go with it. It is a shame that when the, gov uh, the Constitution has defined what a political party is and the EC has the legal right and authority to determine who is a presidential candidate, then you split them into your own criteria outside of everything that is legal in the country. And then what makes it worse is that you tell everybody that you're giving them a chance to see who is the best presidential candidate to vote for for the election. Immediately, you've caused a huge problem for every single person in Ghana because you are choosing who is qualified to run the race, who is qualified to govern Ghana. Nobody has that right. Of course, they, they chose the, right. yes, the criteria who, of yes, parliament which is so uh, narrow. representation. And it's but I, I guess otherwise you will have a debate and, and there will be a numerous um, candidates there and maybe the debate will not be no, no, uh, no, no. You catchy. See, there and are so many ways. There's a youth group called Voices of the Youth because they know that they needed the presidential candidates to have enough time to address their questions. They allotted four days a day, I mean four hours a day for each presidential candidate. So you're so saying they you could have missed more times? Have, yes, they could have done even two at a time over a four-day period or four at a time over a two-day period. It doesn't even have to be back to back. So, so the, what um, would Dr. Endum have added to the debate had he been there? Uh, for, I mean, we have our platform, we have our position, we have our approach, we have our tr strategy. And definitely he would have answered the question specifically. He would have said, and I'll quote, for example, in this area, we will do this. We will build model schools in all regions. We will ensure teachers are trained to this level so that they can teach the students well and ensure that they have accommodation so that they are fully focused when you ask them about quality education. You see, he will give you examples of what the PPP is going to do. He's not going to give you a generalized thing, you know, and he's going to tell you what we will do for farmers. He will tell you what we will do for health, and he will explain why we have adopted that approach. He's not going to point on something in the past or something in the future. He will tell you what we can do now and what we can do next and be very specific on the issues. So in your opinion, and is it, it now too late for the IEA to maybe go no, back on their decision and, and invite you and the other candidates? It is not too candidates. late. If I was part of the IEA, I would schedule a second presidential debate and invite the four legitimately remaining <laughs> uh, presidential candidates to also come and talk to the nation because they are there to be voted for. They also have their views and I think they deserve the chance to be heard by every single Ghanaian, just as the others do. We are not saying don't put the other four there. We are saying put all the eight there, including us. That's fair, that's democratic, that's equity. You know, that will help deepen the democracy in this country. We so your exclusion democracy. from this debate, um, will it affect your chances in this year's election? To some extent it could, but not enough to stop us from getting to the castle. I don't think so, because I think Ghanaians are fully awake. They are looking for something that is sustainable. We are promising them sustainable development, not on our own steam, but together with them. We call ourselves Team Ghana for that purpose. We know that a political party cannot develop a country. We've had it for, what, 20 years plus? It hasn't worked. We're saying we need a new approach to development. 
an approach that will ensure sustainable development. And on that note, today is Farmers Day. Let's talk about your program for agriculture for a bit. Um, what does PPP suggest uh, in order to improve the situation for farmers? Well, they need ready markets. The government, our government, will use government purchasing power to support the farmers so that they don't have to worry about losing food after harvest, getting less money than they started with getting into debt. We will make sure that every public institution, if they are going to eat or drink anything, it has to come from the farmers in Ghana. If maybe we are short of food, you can have weather situations, we can import some. But until such a situation arises, every single public civil service organization, if you're going to do something with government money, you buy from the farmers. But isn't that happening already with oh, the school no, feeding no, program, no, no, for no, instance? No, 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 That's what you they see, say. They're please, buying locally. You see, you, when you say you're buying locally, it doesn't mean that the food was produced locally. If I walk into a shop and buy a bag of rice, I've bought locally. We are talking about the fact that the farmers will be supplying this produce. They know that they have a guaranteed market for a percentage of whatever they produce. And the rest, of course, all of us will buy. They can export some if they have enough. This okay, is not so what is happening. Okay, so government purchasing from Plus, farmers, is that enough? No, not just that. You see, how do you bring the food? The roads. We went to the north recently, and we were told that there are election roads. So, of course, we say, what is an election rule? He said, the ones that you've been using. They said, Madam, when it's time for election, they bring the tractors, the bulldozers and everything. They start scraping the roads and building these little, you know, gutter covering bridges. As soon as the elections are over, then all these things are pulled out. And this is why we have roads like this. And they are terrible roads to travel. We got to one particular bridge. I thought the bridge has collapsed. So I said, ah, but why are we going to pass <laughs> through a bridge that has collapsed? I said, no, madam, the road is under the water. We had to turn around because when somebody waded through it to test it for us, they test it with a human okay, body. So it roads. was up to here. So uh, roads. In, in your 10 um, also facilities for storage. Okay, mm -hmm. facilities for storage. You also talk about tax incentives in these documents. Yes. Uh, here. Can you be a bit more specific? What tax well, if, incentives if, can if help For farmers? instance, if, if you take uh, farmers who are producing things to export and so on, and you know that, uh, the, first of all, we haven't resourced them properly, but of course our government will resource them properly. They tend to stop, and I'll give you a typical example. In the north, shea butter is in trouble because it takes a very long time when you plan for them to get big enough to produce. So the old ones are dying, and there's no, they don't get much from this shea butter uh, produce. So most of them are saying, we are not interested. We are not going to do it anymore. Shea butter is like cocoa for the north. If you've heard about this body shop, all those big cosmetic so companies, what do you suggest? we are saying that one will build a, a, a refinery there, two will uh, subsidize them to grow the plants and will help them to already process the shea butter up to the level where if they are selling to these companies who, by the way, they come and buy it for 50 pesos a bag. Now our own so people can sell it. So who is the tax incentives it. for? It's not it's for, for the, the farmers. Buyer. No, it's, it's for the farm. For no, it's it's for the farmers, because you see they need to continue to produce so that we don't get into trouble. Because some of us use hair butter as skin cream. Some of us use it for food. Some of us use it for our hair, and it's a very good product. But they get very little out of it because it's a tedious process and they don't have enough money so they do just the little that will give them something to it so they need to be encouraged to do it and they should be given uh, some tax incentives so that when they start and here they don't i want you to be a trouble. bit specific what incentive are we talking about no for instance if they have to there are export duties there are some of course unfortunately there are certain things they have to import to help the process you make sure that instead of taxing them overly so that they can't afford it you either take the, uh, the tax away for a few years until they are on their feet or you reduce it so that it doesn't kill the incentive for them to keep doing what they are doing. It's, it's, very, it's very simple.
you know. My next issue I want to discuss with you is health. Now, the recent uh, debate we just talked about uh, raised some issues on the national health insurance uh, scheme and how it can be improved. Um, NPP said NHIS is poorly managed, the NDC says it's working well. What is the PPP view? Well, we feel that definitely it's not working well. But we don't even think it's something that we should be worrying over, fighting over, when there's this big issue of preventive uh, health care. When I was growing up, we had public health nurses. They will come to your homes, they talk to you about health, hygiene, sanitation, because sanitation and health, they go hand in hand. Poor sanitation means poor health. And these public health nurses helped women you know, at all stages in their child delivery to ensure that so the child delivery, it will be reinstituted. Nurses. Then we had town council who were dealing with sanitation. And you can be taken to court if you have your gutter filthy, around you is filthy, and so on. We will reinstate uh, these. Now, uh, President Mahama, he mm. um, inaugurated his National Sanitation Task Force, which sounds a bit uh, similar where there is cleanup exercises no, in no. various communities, education is no. part of the program. So you're not willing to build on this isolation no, no, you in see, your head? Yes, because you see, what is a, a presidential sanitation program? You see, there's AME. There are institutions that are tasked to do this job. Leave them to do their job. Just resource them. Just give them what they need and put the policies and rules into place so that they get the work down. done. That's how the town council was working. It doesn't need any presidential. I mean, at this time of the year, when we are surrounded, as we speak, I can take you to places that, I mean, when you see the black and white plastic bags, you will not even know that there's water under. It's spoiling so many things. This is not a campaign. This is not a project. But, but this is a national thing that has to be done. Public health nurses, isn't it similar just adding no, 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 a no, no. It's No, you see, they exist. They've just been delegated to some corner where they are not, no longer effective. We are just bringing them back. The institutions must work. If there's a public health nurse sitting at a clinic not doing the house to house or not teaching people the schools and so they go to school. So after four years of PPP rule mm -hmm. and these uh, public health nurses, nurses, what differences would we see in our surroundings? For instance, you won't have malaria so that we will not be paying so much money to cure malaria, which I mean, it's even shameful to say you have malaria in 2012. Other countries have killed whatever it is in the mosquito that causes malaria. And sanitation is so good that they don't multiply. Why should something that is so easily preventable be at the stage it, it is now so that a lot of people will lose productivity through a lot of people getting malaria? Then you have cholera. I mean, we are talking still about sanitation. But I, think, no I think we're all agreeing on that we, we should eradicate malaria and, and cholera. Yes, but there are better ways of doing so it. Has tried. No, you just why, do it. Why will you succeed where they have failed? Because our approach is practical. Kill whatever is in that mosquito and stop these treated mosquito nets. After you've been beaten by mosquitoes, then you go and lie in a treated mosquito net. It doesn't work. You kill so what whatever. Is your we will ki yeah, we are going to kill whatever is in. It's been done in the states. America had mosquitoes. Britain had mosquitoes. They've killed. You're the, going to kill the, all the mosquitoes. No, no, not the mosquitoes. They give them. It's a chemical thing. They feed them. You know, they eat it. After a while, they lose that whatever it is biologically that makes them transmit this malaria parasite to humans. There's so also exactly how sanitation. Will this happen? Is it spraying the whole country or some spraying, yes, but I think they have what they call the donut or something. I mean the scientists will know better than me, but there's a direct way of stopping the mosquitoes. If one country have done so, why can't we do the same? Okay. So let's go you back know? to the national health insurance mm -hmm. scheme. Um, how yeah. will you we believe that it prevention has is one part, but we also have to have a na national health insurance yeah, or see, some day to day. We do get sick, so how will you address? Of that? course, people will fall sick, but if you're giving something like this, it has to be universal and it has to be uh, practical. You see, you have to define the age groups properly. You have also to look at the way it is being dispensed. When you go to Kolibu now and you have national health insurance, the run around that you have to do before finally some paper is given to you to go and do whatever you need to do, it's too tedious. If you're going to die, you die during the process. You know, and there's a lot of bottlenecks and so on. All that needs to be removed.